I get the honor of uh, introducing uh, Wendy Palmer Sensei. Um, so I'll uh, start us out um, by just also saying personally, uh, when I was a young woman starting Aikido, I was devouring as much as I could about reading everything I could about Aikido and finding um, Wendy Palmer's books was incredibly useful to me. And I'm gonna post um, a link to her website uh, and her books for anyone who is not aware of her writing. She's written some incredible books about Aikido. Uh, leadership Embodiment, The Intuitive Body, and The Practice of Freedom. I'd really recommend uh, checking out her wonderful work. Um, specifically, uh, uh, Wendy Palmer Sensei is six degree black belt in Aikido. She's been practicing Aikido mindfulness for over 40 years. She's also one of the founders of Aikido of Tamalpais in California. Um, and then she has really taken Aikido off the mat uh, in an incredible way. She is the founder of the Leadership Embodiment, which uses Aikido principles to increase capacity for leaders to respond to stress and pressure um, in their organizations. Um, she's had the privilege of being able to take Aikido into executive teams at NASA, the Gap, Gates Foundation, Salesforce, Oracle, Google, like who have you not like been able to bring Aikido to? It's a really impressive group and especially um, as we are all transitioning into figuring out what our Aikido looks like um, off the mat and how we take it into the world uh, in this pandemic uh, place. I think uh, your, what you have offered the Aikido world and what you have to offer us now is of such, such value. So it is uh, my huge pleasure to turn uh, the class over uh, to Palmer Sensei. Uh, and again, for folks, uh, we will have about five minutes at the end for um, some questions. So if you'd like to be typing those in, we'll be taking a look at them and, and checking in at the end. All right. Thank you, Mallory. So I'm gonna start with a standing bow in and then I'll read something and then we'll do some practices. So um, take a moment. So when I, before I start um, the movements, I'm just gonna read a quote. I'm gonna read a couple of things. Um, universal energy is the theme for this. Uh, this is an O-sensei quote. It's all translation as we know. Your body is a creation of the universe, housing the spirit. Your being is miraculously linked to the essence of the universe. In fact, you are one with the universe. And that should be the guiding principle of your life. And now let's just do a little bit of energy warm up. So if everybody would like to come to standing and let's just bring some energy up from the earth and then reach up toward the sky and then send it out into the world. And then drawing energy from the earth, reaching for the stars and expanding out into the world. Let's do a few more from the earth to the heavens, reaching out, sending positive key into the world, drawing from the earth, reaching to the heavens, expanding out into the world, drawing from the earth, reaching for the heavens, expanding out into the world. The earth, heaven, our connection to all things. Earth, heaven, breathing out into the world, positive key. Oh, and let's just stand in that for a minute. Actually, let me see if I can bring some light. There'll be light. We go. Oh. And then what I want to do is a little rowing and that feeling of just um, gathering the energy through us. And one of the things I've been really working on in my classes is to imagine that the key, the life force comes through us, that we are the universe. So that means it's not a matter of me inside myself. It's a matter of me connecting to the universe and bringing it through me. So I'm also going to talk about mind and body unification. Oh, Sensei spoke about that. I'll read another quote before we do that. 
Unification of mind and body will lead to the development of fundamental techniques. Techniques are created by universal energy. Techniques must reflect universal principles. And for this, we need true universal energy. So for me, universal energy means it comes through me. And from a scientific point of view, uh, we're not solid, we're made of atoms. Atoms are primarily space. And so the idea is when I'm doing this rowing exercise that I imagine that the key comes through my back, through my arms, through my fingers and out into the world. And I'm also gonna encourage us to have an intention. So maybe our, my intention has been recently to be able to bring courage and resilience to people at this time. So as I do this movement, I actually want to bring my mind, my intention into the movement to bring courage and resilience to people at this time. So let's all just do a little bit of rowing here. So extending out and just that feeling it's coming through us, through our arms, through our fingers. And it's like a breeze, it's like the wind. And as we row, we just think of the key any way you want is light. For me, it's liquid light coming through my back, through my arms, running through my body, heaven and earth. And then invite it to get a little brighter, a little stronger. A smile always helps that, that brightness, that strength, that focus. We'll do a few more. And then let's stop. Focusing into our hara point and feeling the trembling of the universe. It trembles at our center, all around us, the life force. The universe is always active. Think of it as light in your just finding that light, molecules filled with light radiating from our hara point out into the world. Long, slow exhales, focusing into our hara point and imagining that it radiates out into the world. Okay, stop for a moment and just stand in it. Nice, and let's change harmony and do the other side. So that feeling of bringing it through us, sending it out, really running some positive energy. We're a conduit for positive key to flow through us out into the world. We can make a contribution by sending positive energy out. And then invite it to get a little brighter, a little stronger, without any effort, just invite. A little bit more. That smile really helps bring more positive energy. A few more. Let it flow. And hold and one more. Let's just tremble. That life force. Alive, shaking, trembling. And from our hara point, it flows out into the world. Positive key, filled with light. Long, slow exhales. Let's stop for a moment and just stand in it. And then let's just do one more energetic exercise. So let's do this one. And as we do this, see if you can really concentrate the feeling of energy flowing through your fingertips, flowing out through the walls, reaching out into the world 
blocks around wherever you live or a quarter of a mile, why not? And then think of heaven and earth running through you. Heaven energy flowing down from above, earth energy flowing up from below. So you are a being of light and energy, positive key. You are the universe. Let it get a little brighter, a little stronger. Without any effort, just invite more to come through. Blowing out your fingertips. All right, and let's stop for a moment and just stand in it. So one of the things that I work with a lot is the idea of lightness. Uh, rather than um, being grounded and heavy, sometimes when I teach, I say it's Aiki heresy. I tell people don't get grounded. I mean, you have to be stable, but we want to be light. And if we're light, when Uke attacks us, suddenly Uke becomes light. It's because of mirror neurons. So if I'm like this, then Uke will start to get grounded too. And then there'll be this kind of who's more powerful. If I can be lighter when the attack comes, Uke will lighten up. It's because of mirror neurons. And I always say the one with the most juice wins. So if I'm lighter, then they are heavier. That way I can start to move them. We can flow together. And then the techniques can unfold. So I know for a lot of us, we were taught to be grounded. And um, I did for the first 25 years of my practice. And I got to the point in my 50s where everything hurt. All my joints hurt. It hurt to get out of bed. I was rounded. I was strong. And then I blew my knee out. And I had to start standing on one foot. And so if we all together just begin to stand on one foot, you don't have to pick it all the way up. But what you might notice is that when you go to stand on one foot, it actually, your body automatically begins to stabilize upward. In other words, nobody does this, as far as I can tell. When you say stand on one foot, people send energy upward. And O Sensei, in my view, when I watch the videos, he worked a lot of heaven, a lot of up. Heaven and earth, equally. And so that would be the idea. My first 25 years, it was more earth than heaven. And so I started in the last 25 years or so working the heaven part. And I have to say I'm in my mid seventies and my body doesn't hurt very much anymore. And when big strong guys come to attack me, what I do is just before they attack me, I pop up, I get light. And then it's the most phenomenal thing. They pop up a little bit, they get light. And then we can flow together and the techniques unfold. So one way to do that is be sure that my hominy is not too wide. A wide hominy will put me in a more um, grounded, stable place. And a shorter hominy, uh, Kamena uh, came in on the last of her thing. It allows more movement, more flow. We can be more adapted to the situation rather than stick it out. Um, and so these days, in the midst of our challenges that we have, I think one of the greatest gifts we can give into the world is to be light, to be shiny, to be full of positive ki. Every year in uh, my dojo, I take a quality uh, for the year and it's benevolent power this year because I just wrote a book on dragons and power. And so what I'm gonna encourage us to do is practice being a little bit lighter, a little more open, a little more expansive. So um, let's uh, once again, just do this up, reach for the sky, out, and then pull from the earth. But let's really emphasize touching the stars. And out. And again, drawing up from the earth. I'm going up on my toes a little bit and then coming out. Up from the earth. 
just to get that feeling of lightness, the power of lightness and openness. All right, let's stop for just a minute and see if you can concentrate on a spiral going up. And what I like to imagine is that the spiral is running through my body and it's a double helix. So there's always an up energy going toward the sky and always a down energy going toward the earth. And what I'd like to practice is being 50% of each. So 50% up in light to heaven, all the way up to the stars, 50% down through the bottom of my feet into the earth. And it's a double helix constantly spinning inside me. And just see if you can play with that concentration for a minute. Just standing in it. All right, and now let's just do a little bit of movement with that. So this is kind of a classic Aikido move. And be sure that if we're doing this, that we're not too heavy, that there's a feeling that there's equally energy on the upside of my arm and the downside of my arm. Equally energy running up the top of my head and down into the earth. And then we'll um, go for the other side, boom. And it's really easy to sink and go down. And so, because that was my training for so long. So to teach myself to do this and have that feeling of lightness, stability, and be sure in my arms too. That it's, so if somebody were to grab my arm, if an UK were to grab my arm, they would have a feeling of lightness as well as heaviness. It's not all of this. It's that feeling. And what I've discovered is it's much easier to lead Okay, when I have a bit of that. So what I'm going to do now, instead of waiting for the end for the questions, and what I do in class often, um, what I'm teaching is I stop, and I'll say to um, the class, <clears throat> I'm interested in how the techniques that we just did or the practices that we just did might reflect on conversations you would have. Because many of us train a lot, but I don't think we're going to spend as much time on the mat as we do off the mat in a 24-hour period. Maybe when we were young, but we're not, most of us, that young anymore. So we have conversations with ourselves. That's sometimes the most difficult conversation. Conversations with others. And I'm interested, how do I bring my Aikido practice into conversations that I'm having um, off the mat? So I um, want to open it right now to see if there are any questions. And if somebody could, um, instead of me having to look in the chat box, if somebody could mm, tell me the question, and then I'd be glad to answer it. Or a comment is good, too, if anyone has a comment. Uh, I will totally do that for you. And as I'm giving uh, folks a moment to type in questions, um, I just want to have to make a comment of uh, um, awesome, noble, shiny. Oh. <laughs> uh, because I have to say, what you just presented is clearly a manifestation of that. And I know you've been writing about that recently. And uh, if you had any, any comments to share about those three words. I will. I'll tell the story. So actually, the story is from um, when I was in a seminar with Satomi Sensei many years ago. It was probably, geez, I'm going to imagine the late 70s or even early 80s. And um, he was teaching at Aikido West, I remember specifically doing his beautiful, flowing, powerful technique. And he stopped and he looked at us and he said, you're so stiff. And um, he showed again this beautiful, flowing, powerful technique that he just so amazing to me. And um, he said like this. And so then we all got up and practiced and within 30 seconds he stopped us again. He goes, now you all look spaced out and weak. Um, and then he stopped and he was reaching for the words and he closed his eyes and he said, I want to see your noble. I want to see your awesome. I want to see your shiny. And immediately I just went, oh, that is so perfect. For me, noble is that uplifted, dignified posture. Awesome is that expansiveness. I mean, he, he's so huge energetically. We always used to joke in pictures, who's that little guy standing in Sensei's place? Because he felt like a giant on the mat. And then shiny is the warmth. You know, um, I have this at all times rely on a joyful mind because that's something O Sensei said is Aikido should be practiced with joy. Uh, and that's the shiny, that's the warmth. And it's very hard for someone to be 
retain a level of extreme aggression when the person they're attacking is very warm and inclusive. So thank you for asking that because that's our tagline, Noble, Awesome, Shiny, or NAS. Lovely. Okay, um, we have a, a comment about um, loving that you're talking about um, your intention. So putting out intention, wanting to know uh, also about how you put intention in your feet. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't, that's a, if that gives you enough to work with. Oh, sure. And, and what I'd like to do uh, before we end is I usually have my bouquet and I'll do a little ritual with people um, uh, that we do in the leadership embodiment. And I sometimes do an Aikido of Tamil Pius as well and the Aikido cross. Um, and to do that, though, we have to come up with an intention. Um, I shared mine with you for the um, last while. My intention has been to bring courage and resilience to people at this time. Um, so something short like that, and what I'm going to invite you to do is speak it out loud. Because when we speak out loud, it really um, wakes up our cells and our molecules. And that's the unification of mind and body. Because otherwise, we could be very um, adept in our body and techniques and get off the mat and be inappropriate. Or we can be brilliant here and not be able to follow up under pressure and stay open and flowing. So to be able to say something out loud uh, brings more energy to it and sort of vibrates the molecules and the atoms in our body. And then we make the Boken cut, which we're gonna do and practice really sending it out into the world so that we're making a difference. So we will be doing that um, in a minute. I just wanted to see if there's any other questions on anything I've said or suggested so far. Yeah, lovely comment um, from Ru Hein Sensei, who opened us up with a tea ceremony about this whole weekend is about uh, making connections uh, and the encounters that we have with people. And sometimes you have to arimi and sometimes you have to tenkan in our human encounters and talking about that. Absolutely. And so when I'm teaching out in the world, what I say is that the arimi is a triangle and the triangle is action. And the tenkan is a circle and the circle is listening. It's receiving. So often in techniques, we receive in the circle and then we turn, we put it into a triangle. The speaking up is a triangle, it's putting it out into the world. And listening um, is a lot like, it comes from Aikido, the listening practice, which is if somebody gives us a ski, the idea is the ski lands in the space, not on our bodies. So if somebody criticizes us or I see a news headline, I put it in the space, not in me. And that way I can look at it and possibly even redirect it the same way we do in Aikido um, into something that's going to be more useful rather than just taking it in and going, that's so horrible, that's so terrible, and then feeling myself contract around it. I imagine it goes in the space and we put a little bowl in our imagination there and that the criticism or the horrible headline is in the bowl and I get to look at it and invite O sensei or some inspiring person to help me look at it with more grace and more presence. Yeah, beautiful. I'm going to follow up on that personally, just because I feel like we are probably having some of the most difficult conversations in uh, many of our human histories, just in terms of really uncomfortable conversations around race, around power. Um, how are you holding all of that? How are you using your Aikido? Well, you know, um, uh, one of my sayings is the one with the most juice wins. So in Aikido, if I have more expansiveness and warmth um, and I'm more inclusive, I can redirect my uke. If, the, if I focus on my uke in the attack, um, then they usually get more power and I start to wrestle or struggle. But if I can, so the way I'm working with it is if I see or hear something or I recognize something that's difficult, I acknowledge it, put it in the bowl, and then what I try to do is bring inspiration to help me manage it. So I'll invite O Sensei or Mother Teresa or the Dalai Lama, not really them, but their energy to help me engage with whatever that conversation or the implications of the conversation is. I'll say, um, I spend time in South Africa. Uh, what would Nelson Mandela, how would he respond to this? Now, in reality, I don't know, but when I think about that, I access sort of a bigger, wiser part of myself. 
And that helps me manage the unpleasantness because these people, the Dalai Lama, Mother Teresa, O Sensei, they handled so many difficult things and they did it skillfully with compassion or positive power. So by connecting to that archetype, it helps me relate to it in a more skillful way, um, rather than taking it personally and thinking it's me, Wendy, and I'm a mess or it's a mess or they're a mess. It's bigger than that. So that's, that's how I work with it. Sometimes I just invite O Sensei's imaginary view. What would he, how would he respond to this? I don't know in reality, but it helps me access a larger wisdom, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Uh, following on that too, um, lovely question about, you've mentioned smiling. Um, and Janice asks, I've been working on my facial expressions when I throw. Um, and I'm wanting to know if you can talk about um, the combination or the relationship between the expression that you make in your face and uh, technique, how that interacts. Well, I mean, I look at, um, you, as you can see, it's kind of a small picture of O Sensei, but it's the one of him kind of looking up and doing this, and he's full of light. We have that in our dojo because um, the teachers that I'm attracted to uh, have been attracted to in the last 20 years of I am. Um, my Aikido practice are the ones that sort of glow and the ones that smile a lot. Um, I find that very attractive and, I, and there's a kind of a power. Um, Satomi Sensei once said, beauty is power. And when we smile, we're more beautiful and we have more power. It, like, it's very, even Duran Sensei many years ago, we had this thing, we put a knife to the throat, tantra to the throat. And um, the thing is, once the person moves you, you thrust, right? And then what Duran Sensei would do is he'd smile and then he'd move. And it was so weird because it would throw my timing off when he would smile as the attacker. Because it's really weird to attack somebody who's smiling genuinely and warm. So I think there's a huge power in it and it must be genuine. So sometimes if we can't find it inside of ourselves, we can find it outside of ourselves by bringing, I think of His Holiness the Dalai Lama who smiles a lot even in difficult situations. And then that brings a little inner smile to my. So yeah. it's, it's worth expo exploring and experimenting. So before we end, because I know um, there's a little time frame, I want to encourage us all to do this. If you have a bouquet, you can get it. I wish I had mine, but it's en route, as it were. So if you don't, I'm just going to use this. And as all of you know, because you're all like you boom, you're going to pop it out there. You're not going to, huh, huh, but send it out. So we're gonna say our intention. We're gonna make a cut and imagine it just going out through the walls into the world. We're gonna say it again, again. I'll lead you through it, cut three times, and then we'll give a big ki -ai, an ai, a big shout to really energize and send everything out. And that way we get our intention, our thought, activated from our toes all the way through our body. So <clears throat> if you've got your bow can and you wanna set up with it for a moment, and I'm going to say my intention and I'm going to make the cut. We'll all do it together. I wish to bring more courage and resilience to people at this time. And I'm going to cut and then stand in it. Just imagine that that energy goes out through my bouquet, through my arms, into the world. I'm going to do it again. My wish is to bring courage and resilience to people at this time. Boom. And I send it out. Just stand in it. Let it go out through me. I'm going to say it again. My wish is to bring courage and resilience to people at this time. I'm going to cut once, send it out, cut again, send it out. And the third one is a big ki. Hey! And then just stand in it. Just stand in it and let it vibrate through your body. And then if you want, you can put your bouquet <clears throat> away because Normally we do it three times, but we've run out of time. Um, and what I found is by speaking my intention out loud and using the bokeh to energize it, um, what I want tends to manifest more because instead of my head wanting something and my body doing something else, when I'm doing this little ritual practice, it begins to unify my mind and my body. My intention is then activated in my body. And then that, brings more energy to my intention, is to do it for everything from my toes all the way up through my legs, fingers. 
and speaking it out loud brings a lot of energy to it. On that before we finish, or any comments or thoughts? We will have a little bit of time after you finish and bow out for questions as well, too. Oh, okay. Well, I think that I've used up my time, so um, I will bow out. So let's just take a moment before we bow out and just radiate some energy out into the world, positive energy, and appreciating our friends and training partners, our teachers, O Sensei's vision, and appreciating ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Sensei. That is beautiful. Um, you'll have to look at the comments because people are saying that your your class and your answers have been bringing tears to their eyes. Uh, just really a nice way to offer um, uh, just a, a lovely perspective. Um, uh, since we do have you, I wanted to follow up with another question here too, which is um, asking you to talk a little bit more about um, embodied leadership and the work that you do there. And then also, how can we take those principles uh, with all of us as leaders to bring that into our own lives? Well, yes. I mean, <clears throat> that's what my work has been. I, Aikido is such a gift, and there's so many people who will never study it. And I wanted to bring that gift, I know Jamie's nodding because she does the same, to people in the world and find that way I could take the principles into organizations or just other places uh, where people weren't gonna roll and fall. Um, so sometimes we have um, people hold each other and give a little push, they can't even imagine a little push. And one thing that I use that's from the mindfulness more than the Aikido part is to take a moment and acknowledge the tension, the off-centeredness. Because in Aikido, we're just so busy, correct, correct, correct. But I think it's important to realize, ooh, I'm, I'm tight, I've closed. And then go, oh, look at me. I'm just trying to keep myself safe by, by trying to protect myself. And then taking myself through the practice this is what we do with leaders. Inhale, uplift. Exhale, think of something that makes us smile. We want that testosterone and that oxytocin. Expand out a little bit. And then we have the person give the push or imagine the criticism land in the space. Just like in Aikido, the attack ideally lands in the space. And that gives the person a lot more resources to be able to manage whatever is coming at them. So we, in the old days, we did it by touching. Um, I've been doing a lot online and saying, hold your hands out like this, like you're gonna meet somebody and then imagine they push on you like this and feel yourself tighten. And then I take people through this is kind of fun, touch the top of your head, bring your hand up and it lightens your energy up. Inhale, uplift. Exhale, think of something that makes you smile. And I have them actually reach out, fire extensors, because so many people are in this. And this is really good for blood flow, for oxygen. And of course, in Aikido, we know we want to be extended and open. You don't want to be tight. Um, you know, the Ikkyos are nice movements and things. So that's how we work with it, we have people sitting at their desks doing that or have them stand up and, and they get it right away. Um, we do a little exercise, think of something unpleasant, make yourself tight, notice what it's like. Then we take them through this uplifting, thinking of something that makes you smile, opening up, think of that same thing again. And it's, they, almost everybody finds it's very different when they're in a different energetic state. And so we say it's, you can change your perspective on things very quickly if you change your body energy and your muscle groups. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, I have to just share this wonderful comment. Someone has just typed in, uh, Wendy Sensei, you are the bling. <laughs> well, I love bling. I mean, you know, once I got in my 70s, I'm like, you can't have enough bling. I was even thinking about embroidering a little bling in my hakama. So when I took a roll, you get a little flash. <laughs> So bling is great. It's shiny, it sparkles. And if we have that energy, we can make a contribution. It doesn't mean we don't have difficult conversations. Of course we do. But if I think of Desmond Tutu, the Reverend Desmond Tutu or the Dalai Lama, they have very difficult conversations about very unpleasant things. 
similar to the things we're dealing with now in the world. And they always remain light and smiley, and yet they answer very clearly. So I think it is possible to, to bring that energy. You also have created a light bulb aha moment um, for, for Carol, who says, um, uh, not giving your energy away to Uke is something that we know on the mat, but thinking about having to take that off the mat and how we can actually do that right now in our current state of things is, is so powerful. So not giving yes. our energy away. That's great. And I encourage people, every time you see a headline, put it in a bowl in front of you, in your imagination. Invite someone wise and inspiring into your awareness and then look again at that headline. And I think it will give you a broader view and it'll be less um, stressful for your immune system. Because when we tighten up, we see those headlines and we tighten up or we hear those stories, it's not good for our body. So we need to find a way to stay open and resourceful to be able to respond to these challenges that are happening now. Tightening up and Aikido isn't good and it's not good off the mat either. Yeah, beautiful. I also love this one. Uh, Linda has uh, chimed in. I want to be Wendy Sensei when I grow up. <laughs> Without the aches and pains. <laughs> but with that, uh, to that comment, we have had this huge variety during this weekend of uh, younger teachers and then our pioneering uh, teachers. And um, I know other people have kind of responded to how, how do you keep um, just that shininess and that brightness to your practice for the duration of your entire career in Aikido? Practice. You know, Houdini said magic is practice. You know who Houdini was, the greatest magician ever. And um, so I practice, and the way I practice is by uh, remembering throughout the day to lighten up physically and think of something that makes me smile. It's an exercise. It's a practice. So anything that makes us smile, anything that helps us lighten up and then open up, those are the three pieces. Lighten up, think of something that makes you smile, and then open up a little bit. And if we do it a few hundred times, it takes five seconds. You can go noble, awesome, shiny. Five seconds. So if you do that five seconds, a hundred times a day, it's a couple of minutes, um, it can start to change the baseline. So we don't walk around with this kind of heavy heart we have a heavy heart and then we lighten up and we have a heavy heart and we lighten up. That's what practice is. Just like Aikido mat. I lose my center. I get it back. I lose my center. I get it back. So it's practice and practice throughout the day whenever you can. A little lighter, a little warmer, softer and a little more open. Beautiful. Um, we also are getting the comments. I'm really loving the actionable steps and really tying it in. Um, and I know we only have literally one more minute, but what you just did actually, uh, noble, uh, awesome, shiny, and the three moves. Could you go over that again? And maybe we can all do it with you together. Okay. So let's go a little more noble. And that's that uplifted, dignified spine. A little more awesome. That's the expansiveness. And a little more shiny. Think of something that makes you smile. That's that warmth. And when you do that, it'll change your state. It's temporary because stuff happens and we react. That's not a problem. The trick is don't stay there, just like on the mat. If you have a funky technique, you don't want to spend the next minute going, I can't believe I had a funky technique. You have to make the adjustment and the next one might have more flow or power, whatever you're looking for. Beautiful. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Wendy Sensei. Um, I think moving into the rest of our lives with Noble Awesome Shiny is a really lovely way to end your class. And for folks who aren't, have just gotten their first taste of uh, Palmer Sensei, we do have uh, her link in the chat. So please follow up, read her books. And one quick thing is on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific time, if you go to the Aikido of Tamalpais website, I do a virtual class every Tuesday. So it's an hour of this kind of thing. And hopefully, well, I don't know if I'll have my vocab by this Tuesday, but we'll make it up <laughs> until I, I, it does arrive, the, the pod arrives. <laughs> so on Tuesdays, people can tune in and join me for a six o'clock Pacific time. It's a little late East Coast, but sorry about that, um, if you'd like. Thank you so much, Jamie. Thank you so much, Mallory, yep. everybody for yeah. joining. Lots of appreciation, lots of noble, awesome shininess to you all. <laughs> 
Lots Thank and you. lots, Wendy Sensei. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I mean, we know you've just made a big effort to do that. Um, you've just moved your whole life after all these years. So uh, thanks for saying yes and for sharing just so much of your, your beauty and your wisdom and, and with us. Um, I just wanted to say, I know that you are now being called Bling Sensei um, in Brazil <laughs> and probably other places uh, as well. And I just wanted to say, you know, uh, what a mantra and, and a sword cut. You know, my wish is to bring courage and resilience to people at this time. It's so beautiful. And, you know, as we're all uh, kind of dealing with, grappling with, uh, what do we do with our Aikido? And we can't do what we're used to doing. And I would kind of just even say, you know, my wish, our wish is for us all to be bringing Aikido to people at this time. So, yes. Thank you, Jamie. Beautiful. Mm -hmm.